as we progress through the Plasma 6 Alpha and Betas, we quickly approach the full release of February next year. And with Wayland being the basically the only focus of the project now, lots and lots of issues are being resolved. And as Nate Graham tends to do, he released a new blog post. This week in KDE, the Plasma 6 feature freeze approaches. And there's one part in particular I want to talk about. KDE 6 Mega Release. Shutting down or restarting the machine while in Plasma Wayland session now causes apps with unsaved changes to prompt the user to save them, rather than just quitting immediately and losing the changes. No new Wayland protocol ended up being necessary after all, this was one of the last three Wayland showstoppers. This is something that just works properly over on X11 and now works properly on Wayland as well. Bounce keys now fully work in the Plasma Wayland session. This was the second of the last three Wayland showstoppers. Now we're just down to one and it too is being worked on. Bounce keys are something that I and probably most of you don't really use. So taken from the Wikipedia, Bounce keys allow the user to configure the computer to ignore rapid, repeated key presses of the same key. This is typically intended for users who press keys multiple times because of impaired motor skills and intended to press the key only once. For example, if someone has, you know, really shaky hands from Parkinson's. And the last issue remaining is one that I, and many of you, probably once again don't actually need, but it is another accessibility feature. Not all sticky key options work. So this is something especially over on Windows with how easy it is to enable, you probably find really annoying, but it is here for a very good reason. So with sticky keys enabled, you should just be able to press the shift key, and then after that, press a letter and get a capital. Sort of like the way your caps lock works. But instead, it wasn't doing that and was giving a lowercase instead. However, let's go back to that Showstoppers page for just a moment. This is the last entry under the true Showstoppers, but you might have noticed the list down here as well. This is effectively an errata slash known issues list, quality of life annoyances, problems with workarounds, etc. Don't expect all or even any of these to be fixed before we go Wayland by default. Having just one entry left on this true showstoppers list acts as like a great form of marketing and leads to articles like this one from Pharonix. KD is down to just one Wayland showstopper bug remaining. However, I completely disagree with the characterization of what is and is not a showstopper. There is a bunch of entries in here that I feel like should be on this list. Let's start with this one right here. Worst performance on weak Intel iGPUs. With an Intel iGPU, animations aren't as smooth on Wayland versus Xorg. Hopefully we all know by now that there is a disproportionately high number of Linux users making use of ancient ThinkPads, whether it's the X200 or any of those other popular devices. But even outside of that space, there is actually quite a few people making use of Haswell era and even older CPUs. I talked to some people who were still running Sandy Bridge. So whilst it might not be the majority, whilst it might not be a lot of people, there is still a group of people that want their system to run well on something this old. And especially in that laptop space, a lot of users just might not have a dedicated GPU. Now it'd be one thing if KDE just performed badly regardless of Wayland or X11. But it doesn't seem like that's the case here. Today I switched from X11 to Wayland, but unfortunately, Windows keeps stuttering when doing basic movement slash maximizing. I'd say the effect is more pronounced when there are more windows on screen if I go for low latency, even dragging a window with wobbly effect on stutters. I may not have a fast GPU granted, it is- I actually didn't read this one. <laughs> it is a Haswell iGPU. But under Xorg, it is butter smooth in driving two monitors at 1080p. But this is the really weird part. Intel GPU Top reports no significant GPU usage, even when the windows are stuttering. Now you could say it's not that big of a deal because there are some workarounds like increasing the latency and enabling the show FPS effect, which for some reason is raising up their GPU clock. I don't know why it's doing that. But 
for these people that have this CPU, and that's the only CPU they have, for them, why would they ever want to use Wayland if they have to jump through these hoops? And X11 does the thing that they want it to do. For them, this is an absolute showstopper. Next up, limited color management support. This is broken up into several different issues, all of which are very important to work on. Color management on Wayland, color management on Wayland, and work in progress staging add color management protocol. Now, for the average user like you and me that isn't doing professional graphics work, doesn't really matter how our monitor is configured, it doesn't really matter. But if you're doing professional graphics work and you need colors to look exactly the way those colors are supposed to look, it is not negotiable. You either have color management or you don't use it. As we discussed recently in the Fedora KDE dropping X11 video, things are being worked on and this is a major focus for the KDE project. You can now set ICC profiles for each individual monitor. This is a great step up and there are things that don't work on X11. For example, we are now seeing the initial steps for supporting HDR. Right now it's just in games, but it's going to eventually expand outside of that. And I have no doubt within a couple of years, we just won't be talking about this anymore because it's going to be done and everything supports it. But for now, as work is still being done, this is a true Wayland showstopper. And here is another one. Global menu is not supported for non-QT apps. Now, as you can see from my system, I am not a global menu enjoyer. I use the tiling window manager nowadays, and whilst I did use macOS for a couple of years, most of my computing experience comes from Windows, so I just never really cared too much about the feature. However, there is a group of users who refuses to use GNOME because the feature is missing or the extension is broken, and having it kind of like half working where it works in the QT apps but not in the GTK apps, I feel is worse than it just not working altogether. You could say, oh, just don't use the GTK app and find a QT alternative or get over it and don't use a global menu. But once again, why get over it when they can just use the X11 variant and the problem doesn't exist? But maybe none of those were good enough for you. Let's have an NVIDIA bug. Unusably poor performance on external screens with NVIDIA Optimus. NVIDIA will release a driver that should fix this before Plasma 6.0. From my understanding, that driver is not out yet. And the bug is currently still present. Now, the general NVIDIA graphical bugs are something you could probably ignore. But when you're using an Optimus laptop and you are getting low FPS and high CPU usage on external monitor connected to NVIDIA when default GPU is Intel, that's kind of a showstopper if that's your only laptop. My laptop is an Intel Plus NVIDIA Optimus one, which has an HDMI port on Intel GPU and a mini display port on NVIDIA. If the external monitor is connected to the NVIDIA mini display port, though both internal and external monitor are detected correctly and both show the desktop, the whole desktop renders at a pretty low FPS, and KWIN Wayland process consumes nearly 100% CPU of a single core. However, if the image on the external monitor stays static, KWIN Wayland stays calm, and the internal monitor is smooth as usual. So, if it's not updating what it's rendering, it's smooth. Which isn't very useful, because there are users in here that found if they, um move their cursor, everything got really laggy. So without the problem being fixed, an Optimus laptop on Plasma with an external monitor is basically e-waste. You just can't use it. Like, it's unusably bad. Now, you could say, oh, just don't use an external monitor or don't use the GPU. Well, if you're not going to use the GPU, why even have the device? And if you're going to say don't use the monitor, 
I don't want to use a single one of the system if I'm doing something like dev work, streaming, or actually most things on my computer, I want to have a second monitor. Now, whilst there's a way for players that prompt you to save your work if you try to shut down or restart the system, one thing that is missing is no session restore for native Wayland Windows. This is something that does work under X11, and it is also something that is being worked on. So the plan right now is for Plasma 6, implement a sort of fake session restore that on login simply reopens apps that were open on last logout, and count on apps that have state worth saving doing the saving themselves, and many apps already do. Firefox, Discord, Dolphin, Kate, Caden Live, a bunch of other things as well. For a later Plasma 6 version, implement real session restore that's governed by a Wayland protocol. One is in progress and make KDE apps opt into it. That protocol being one we've talked about a bunch of times, XDG session management. It's a while away from being done. I wouldn't expect it to be done for another two or three years, really. Um, but maybe one day. After that, keep the fake session restore and use it for apps that don't opt into the real session restore. This should ultimately produce a better UX than on X11, where many apps never opted into session restore and so it was semi-random as to which apps got launched on login. Plus, there was also the work that David Edmondson was doing on full state saving so you could like move all your apps over to a whole other compositor, you could restart everything after a reboot, and all of these different things. That's a long way away. This is more about just getting the windows open, and the state stuff that can be done at a later time. Everything so far has just been the KDE specific issues. There are also the Wayland general showstoppers that KDE hasn't addressed either. Things like making multi-window apps actually work properly. If you have a scientific app that has a bunch of windows, you need those windows to be placed correctly. That's something that's not being done yet because we need a new protocol. That protocol is in design by committee hell and nobody can agree on what's being done. I don't know if that's ever gonna get fixed, Hopefully it does. It's going to be a mess when it does, though. And then there are the... Actually, a lot of the other issues KDE already addresses. Things like not having a global hotkey system. KDE has that. Apps not supporting the video portal. They have the x and video bridge. So, I'm sure there's something else that probably could come to mind, but the main one is the multi-window stuff. Now, I get the idea here. These are issues that must be fixed before we can recommend Wayland by default. But especially for things like that NVIDIA issue, like, you can't recommend Wayland by default if something like that still exists. But what do you guys think? Do you think I'm overreacting? Do you think some of these are actually giant showstoppers still? And have a read of the list for yourself and see if there's anything on there that you feel is a true showstopper. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, Go like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrabs, the Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and hopefully, I'm going to be running Plasma 6 on February 28th.